Well, hello, church. I want to welcome you again to our Sunday webcast and the message that I have for you today. If this is the first time you've been tuning in to our this Sunday message, welcome. Glad to have you joining with us today. I'm Gary Preston, the interim pastor here at Aviano Baptist Church uh, the last six weeks. You know, we're only a week away from Easter. and We had a wonderful webcast service last week. Hope you were able to join us on that. And glad to have you back again today. This will be my final Sunday to bring a message to you. Uh, Pastor Barry will, will be returning this week, and uh, Suzanne and I will be returning to our home in Colorado. And you know, our time here these six weeks, frankly, has been nothing like what we expected. But we're confident it has been everything that God had planned. And one of the sustaining verses that God gave to us during these six weeks early on in our time here is we were wondering, now, why are we here in the midst of this coronavirus shutdown and we can't go out, we can't meet the church family, we can't interact together? God gave us a promise from Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. My wife was reading through the Old Testament and she's in the book of Deuteronomy and came across this verse and God spoke to us both through that. It goes like this. I like it from the New Living Translation. The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We're not accountable for them, but we are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. Well, we did our best to be faithful, to fulfill the role, the plan that God did reveal to us to be here and to be the interim shepherd to the best that we can, on, even during this season of home lockdown. And we trust, though, we know that he had bigger plans that we don't know. And we leave those to him and know that he'll be working those out. And, you know, as I think of Jesus' disciples, just a, a week after Easter, that first Easter, I wonder how long it took them to realize that God had bigger plans than what he'd even revealed to them. There was now going to be in their lives a new normal, something God had planned from ages past, but would just now be revealing to them. And by, by that I mean that life as they knew it would now not be the same after the resurrection. Recently, I, I caught myself saying that I look forward to the days when life gets back to normal. <laughs> I mean, life after the lockdown is finished. And we return home to the United States and back to the way that life was before the coronavirus and before the lockdown, even before we came here to Aviano. And then I had to catch myself and correct my thinking on that because I wouldn't want to waste this season of the coronavirus and the lockdown by just going back to life as normal. I wondered and I thought to myself, do I really want to go back just to the same work routine, same friends, same finances, same daily schedule, same recreations, same patterns and practices, same finances, same everything as it was before the coronavirus lockdown? And perhaps when we look at it like that, maybe like me, you don't want everything in life to return the, to the way it was, the old normal. But in order for that not to happen, we need now to begin to reflect on what the new normal should be very much like the disciples had to do after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He spent 40 days with them, and there was going to be a new normal that God would bring to their lives. You see, this coronavirus interlude can be seen as an unwelcome disruption, something we want to end as soon as possible so that we can quickly get back to the life we were living before. Or it can be viewed as something that God wants to use for some unexpected good in our lives. I think the phrase that C.S. Lewis used 
a severe mercy is applicable to this. It's severe because it brings our lives to a, a sudden stop. It's unexpected. It was unwanted. It's an intrusion for a season. And it's a mercy because God wants to use it as part of his hidden plan for our lives. He's doing something special in our lives that we may not know the full extent of, but he wants to reorient the normal of our lives to a new normal. Now think of that with me for a moment. What are some of the unexpected benefits that you've discovered during this season of the COVID lockdown? For me, it's been lots of time for, for some recreational reading that I haven't done for years. It's been daily walks with my wife through some of the Italian countryside here. Uh, afternoon coffee time with wonderful, flavorful Italian coffee. It's been some physical rest that I was in need of and hadn't had without any stress. In fact, it's even given me an opportunity to become a first-time member of Facebook, something I said I'd never do and ended up doing that here. What's it been for you? Maybe some unexpected time with your family. Perhaps some more time in just fellowship with God. Drawing close to him and listening to him in ways you hadn't done before. In his word and through prayer. Perhaps it's been more time for yourself to exercise, to read, to rest, even to study. Or maybe an opportunity to catch up with some friends that you'd lost contact with. A chance perhaps to serve some people that you had overlooked. You see, in this severe mercy that we've had the opportunity to experience, God wants to bring out of it a new normal in our lives. Just like he did for those first followers of Jesus after the resurrection. Going forward, he wanted them to have a, a new normal. You see, Jesus didn't want them to go just simply back to the way life was once Jesus returned to heaven and the resurrection was finished and he was no longer here on earth. And so he, he told them, in essence, hold on, guys. I have something new for you. We really see that in the opening book of opening chapter of the book of Acts. And I'd like to read just a, a thought or a verse or so from there, because in Acts chapter one, and you can read it more fully, but we discover Jesus explaining this new normal to his disciples, he encourages them to see what God is doing as he unfolds his plan for them. In Acts chapter 1, and you can read the full passage, but I'm just going to focus on verse 8 here, maybe a familiar verse to you. Jesus said to his disciples, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. In those words, we see that Jesus is telling his disciples that their new normal will have two elements. And now, Christ's presence would remain in them through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus would be in them. And they would receive that Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And then God's kingdom which Jesus references in, in verse 3. God's kingdom, God's reign and his rule in the lives of people would now be the focus of their witness, and their proclamation of the gospel. And so we could say that their new normal would be that the presence of the Holy Spirit would produce a proclamation of God's kingdom. And just as Jesus didn't want his disciples uh, to go back to the old normal after the resurrection, 
I believe he doesn't want us to do that either. After this coronavirus passes and life comes back to what we knew of it before. And really, that's the point where I started today's talk. I wonder, will we have a new normal in our lives once shops begin to open again? We can take off our gloves and our masks, literally. The kids finally go back to school. And yes, they will. That will happen eventually. We can begin to travel again. We can enjoy barbecues with our friends and neighbors and co-workers. We no longer have to cook every night because restaurants will be open again. We may not have to shop for friends or elderly neighbors or check in on a single mom next door. Life will go back to normal when people can function on their own and take care of themselves. And once we can return to our normal lives, I wonder, will there be some aspects, though, of our life during this coronavirus lockdown that are worth retaining? Elements we've experienced that we don't want to lose, that we want to bring into our new normal. These are elements uh, during the lockdown life that maybe have turned out to be blessings in disguise. Parts of God's plan that we hadn't seen before, hadn't been revealed to us, but now he shows us and we want to keep those. Like having the entire family sit down together for dinner multiple nights during the week. Or spending a really quality time with your kids because you don't have to rush through the day and pick them up at the next scheduled appointment place or drop them off somewhere. Or, or move about a, a hectic schedule. Going for a walk in an afternoon or an evening with a spouse or with your kids. Actually reading books that have been on your reading list far too long. Or having a real prayer time each day, maybe several during the day, it, instead of just praying behind the steering wheel or between appointments as we rush through our daily lives. Or getting time to read and actually even study the Bible. Or having a deep conversation with a friend. Or taking stock of your relationship with God. Maybe asking the hard questions. Where is God in my life? Perhaps some of you even during this time became followers of Jesus for the first time. You see, we've all experienced some blessings in our lives through these coronavirus restrictions. And we never want to let those go. They came unexpectedly, but we want to hold on to them now that we've experienced them. And so I want to encourage you today in this final message that I have for you as a church, that this week, would you take some time to identify at least two of those elements, two elements of lockdown blessings that you want to hold on to, to make part of your new normal once the coronavirus lockdown is completed. And do it before the restrictions are lifted, would you? So you don't miss out on the benefit of the severe mercy that God has brought to us, and that God wants to gift to us. Well, those are my closing thoughts for all of you. And as we return to the States and Pastor Barry and Jeannie are reunited with you, Suzanne and I want to thank you for allowing us to be here. We haven't met most of you, but we love this church, having had some contact with it in years previous. And we will pray for you as you continue to fulfill God's vision for your church to learn more about Jesus, how to love him more, and to lead more to love Jesus. So God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Love one another. And reach out to those who don't yet know Jesus. And celebrate your new normal.